I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. Today I'm joined by Sean Sinclair. Uh, what, what's your title exactly with the PDGA, Sean? All kinds of all kinds of tricks. I'm the head of the disciplinary committee. I'm on the rules committee. Uh, this week I am acting as the competition director for the World Championship. For the M World. So he's a jack of all trades, and he one of the big things that you do is working with the disciplinary committee and doing some stuff with the rules and when there's infractions or problems or complaints or whatever you kind of help head all that up which can't be a fun job I'm sure today we're gonna kind of a special blog uh, mixed in with some tips from the pros where we're gonna talk about rules and even some things where people think they're rules but they're really not so let's get some clarifications on those what would you say is the number one rule that's not really a rule or one of the most popular things that you hear? Probably the one that's come up the most this week has been, can I use this that I didn't start with? Okay, so you might be playing uh, on a course that's got a bunch of water on it. You throw your two favorite drivers in the lake or in the pond. You can walk I, up. Can I go to the car and go get another disc? Or in our case, we had vendors at the course. Can I go buy another one? and use that during the round. And the answer is? Absolutely. Okay. Terry and I can be playing it around. We could switch discs if we want to. As long as they're uniquely marked, that's all that matters. Yep. Any disc, during the round, anytime. All right, so if you're out on the round and you need more discs, whether they're in your car or wherever they might be, or somebody brings them to you, which is even more likely, you're more than welcome to use them. Now remember, you can't hold up your group and say, hey guys, I gotta make a 10 minute jaunt somewhere and then come back. But if you're passing the parking lot in between holes or whatever, You've got as long 30, as you got 30 seconds to take your shot. As long as it doesn't hold anything up, you're welcome to use um, discs that you accumulate or bring in during the round. Correct. Um, let's talk a little bit about scoring, maybe some of the importance in scoring. Uh, one of the common things we saw this week was? Incorrect scorecard, incorrect scoring procedure. So let's just go real quick over the correct scoring, scoring procedure, which is if it's your turn to take scores on the hole, Call out each individual score, including yourself. Repeat the score back so everybody in the group can hear it clearly, no problem. And my tip on that, the interject is, no matter what you get on your hole, say please. It makes it so much more uh, pleasant. Whether you got a two, say two please. If you got a four, say four please. That will even help you calm yourself before you go to the next hole. So then at the end of the round, the entire group should stay together, verify your score, initial for it. Everybody else, verify their score, initial for it. Do not take anybody else's word that they added up your card correctly. And then beyond that, say you're a quarter of a mile from Tournament Central, don't go, hey guys, I'm going to the parking lot, turn in the score, because what we saw this week from what was written down and what ended up at Tournament Central, has come up incorrect. So my tip that I followed from day one is I walk with that scorecard all the way until it's handed to the tournament director. And the rule book states that it is the responsibility of the entire group to make sure that scorecard gets turned in. So don't leave it to Joe, even if he did have the hot round, don't leave it to Joe or Mike or someone else to be assured that he'll turn it in because he may do something silly like put it in his pocket, think he's gonna drive up to Tournament Central and he forgets and goes and then he goes to get lunch and then everybody in the group gets, penalized. gets two stroke penalty. So make sure you don't trust somebody else to turn in the scorecard, walk it up there with them. So uh, those are a couple of good ones. What else are we seeing in terms of rules that um, maybe are miscon well, maybe not misconceptions, but that we get challenged with when we're out here? One of the absolute biggest and most important, especially at a major event of this caliber, is it's the player's responsibility to know the course and all of the ground rules that go along with it. Okay. We had several instances this week where people have played the incorrect tee, People have played from an area that was out of bounds that shouldn't have been out of bounds. You know, people have played holes incorrectly. As the player, it's your responsibility to know those rules. And the tip there is in a major event, go out and see these courses beforehand. And if any questions come up, come see the tournament directors officials, marshals, etc. And by seeing the course, you don't even have to necessarily play the course, 
just walking around and taking mental notes of, okay, there's OB here, or there's relief, or there's a line here, or there's a road or a path. Take mental notes of those so that it's not a surprise, because then when you get out there in the heat of the tournament and you're playing, you don't want to throw and be like, oh, I don't know if that was out of bounds or not, and if three other people on your card don't know, then everybody's in chaos and confusion and you get frazzled real easily. The rule book states it is your responsibility to play the stipulated course. So just because it's um, a likely mistake to walk from hole 8 right over to hole 10 because the hole 9 is tucked away, that's not really our fault as tournament directors. That is still your responsibility. We'll try and direct you, but at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to make sure you play the correct course in the correct order with all of the correct rules. And uh, I'll add to that real quick. Some tournaments may have a handout or a guide or something of that nature. Make sure you pick one of those up or make those accessible to you and carry that with you in your group so that you can reference it during the round. A lot of times this week we had an addendum and people just said, oh, I, I didn't pick it up. I don't, I don't really know what the rule is. Well, it was your responsibility. Make sure you pick up that addendum and that you play by those rules. Yeah. Is there anything else that, um, that maybe we see out there, whether it's on tour or casual play? I, one thing, um, holding branches, you want to elaborate on that for a lie or something? Yeah, we've had situations where players understand the rule and they assume that it only follows one particular instance and you just mentioned holding back trees. Players think that if they're physically holding a branch, that's all that counts. But if you're going in and your whole body is blocking something, that constitutes holding something back. You want to play the disc as it lies with the least amount of disruption. I think the last thing that I'd like to talk about is the responsibility of the player and conduct of the players. So we are an ungoverned group when we play the course. We don't have referees and umpires on every single hole. It's the player's responsibility to call infractions on players in your game. If you're upset that somebody is, you know, has foul language or is disrupting you, talking, they're walking in front of you, it's your responsibility to make that call. You can't, after the fact, <laughs> go and say, well, so-and-so did this, take care of it. No, and it's like anything else that you're dealing with, any kind of reprimand. You want to document it, and you want to address it right then and there. And, and as you just said, foul language or any kind of rule infraction, if you see somebody that's foot faulting, whether it's a, a tee off or a putt, call them or warn them or take whatever necessary you know steps you need to at that time, because otherwise they're just going to keep doing it. And they may not even realize they're breaking a rule. So sometimes there is a learning curve, but you really need to help them so that the entire group has a little bit better synergy because if some guy or girl just keeps breaking rule after rule it's probably going to fester within all of you in that group and you're going to go complain about it later and say oh that needs to be fixed or changed well it has to start right within the group that's pretty much what you're saying yep and the most common thing i hear is well gosh i don't want to be the bad guy so something i like to think about i may not say it out loud is sorry that you're forcing me to make you play by the rules. Correct. If, if you think about it that way, you're not going to be the bad guy. You're playing by the rules. You're making it fair for everybody. All right. Well, with that being said, Sean, we thank you so much. Thank you, Terry. It's a daunting task probably to seem like the bad guy, even though you just want to help people play by the rules. And it does make the sport a lot more enjoyable at every level of the game. So um, thanks for everything that you're doing there. And for you guys, go out and get yourself a rule book. It's, you can download it for free, pdga.com. You can download a rule book, read it, and print it, and bring it with you to the course. There's really no excuse not to know the rules. So for now, and for here in Marion, Ohio, and for Sean Sinclair, and our awesome camerawoman, Juliana Corver, thank you so much. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and we'll catch you guys next time. See ya.